uh, brass fitting here for our cable correction and it's uh, just straight machining brass but I off cut the uh, milled groove in it I didn't use a hacksaw I just milled it two, two plus millimeters and I off cut it so that when it enters the actual diameter inside it is being held in by a lip and that gives better safety feature for the whole thing uh, not that I've ever had a, a break on one of these but I, I also make the top very heavy and then also make sure that three quarters of this cable is inside of your brass cut at the top when machining that so <clears throat> this will fit de uh, deeply into this and then you'll turn your access hole to the back or to the inside if you like but this is near press fit so it's not going to shift a lot in there fits very nicely it's like a boring small steam engine or something which I build a lot of so that kind of thing there and then that will sit there and then you'll have your cable in there now right now we're running into problems because this extension is technically probably too long for the, the actual distance we have to cover and that means that the bolt that's in here is interfering now with the brake rod being able to adjust this way across this rod here now that this is one piece so the bridging piece of thread that I used in here is a little bit too long then or the original brake rod was too long in f at the first place and it wasn't really working and that's why so we're going to try to uh, take turn this a little bit but very gently I don't want to dig into it so I'm going to use a adjustable wrench on that instead of vice grips now look what I found in the bolt box I found an 8 inch brake lever so or brake rod so we don't have to use that little bodge piece that I had brazed on before all that work. <clears throat> now this is temporary. I want to get a proper 8 inch and get mine back, my spare. But up here if you look, the way the handlebars were set up, even when the brake wasn't working, it was interfering with this throttle right away when it was getting down to the grip. Now that might be a good warning for some people to check their brake cable, but me personally, I like my throttle cables dropping directly below the bike. Straight down 90 degrees or no more, no less really. Make sure you lock tight these as well. <clears throat> so there we go, we have action. Maybe it could go forward a little bit more as long as it's not interfering with your brake lever operation until this point the diameter of the actual throttle I've got to be careful with these screws they're in pretty good shape but they're certainly not new so I'm holding the camera at the same time so I ask I hope that's on camera guys for you so I'm just going to set these up applying positive pressure down into the slot of the screwdriver or the screw a little bit forward perhaps and we'll move the actual brake lever upwards so that you're not ape hanging on it Ape hanging on the handlebar on brakes is not a good idea. Move it towards the throttle, maybe a sixteenth off the throttle, I would say. And I can knock bottom that brake now. And I have also more than half adjustment. That's why I want to get something made a bit better than what I made here. But as you can see, my brass pushing here. Move the light back a bit, maybe. See the brass pushing here? <clears throat> I can rotate it. 
in this piece, but the cable's strength holds it because I sort of made it almost a press fit. Now, when the cable's tension is off of it, I can definitely um, rotate it and remove the cable that way. But unless this three quarters of this cap goes out of this end piece here, you're not going to lose your your uh, brass furl as well. It would would have to come out of this slot, so you have two failure points where it would have to occur. Now, now it's loose. I can move it, and it's at the back. So there you go. The front brake is fixed and rideable. I would ride this now with Loctite properly put on it and proper end cap. Uh, brand new uh, cotter pins and it's ready for a test ride. As long as I have a solid front brake, rear brake's negligible. I can get by with a squeaky brake or whatever, but 70% of your braking is up front, 90% of it for some of us, and some of us never touch the rear brakes at all. So, uh, yeah, we're all set and uh, next stage I think we're going to be taking the cylinder head off to change the cylinder head gasket and I'll fix that rear tail light up so that it works for a test ride before we do that because I'd like to get it into the alley and, and uh, try it out just to see how it feels on the road whether or not it's stable or if I can feel the flex which I probably will be able to feel right away and then we'll take on the rest of the tasks but you can see how a job where you roll your bike in to get it running could turn into a extensive amount of work and anybody who says it's not is just going to do inferior work and cover things up and hide them or let your bike sit there for a long time and not fix it which happens as well and people have to step up and admit that they're not able to do something and it took me 20 years to even think of doing this for somebody else's bike let alone my own which I'd been hacking on for that long so <clears throat> and I've never had a failure on the bike to crash so I've always been careful enough, if it, even if it includes bailing wire, better to have something stay on your bike than fall off because you don't want to be on a cool and use bailing wire. So think about it and, you know, take precautions and have good brakes because brakes are really important, especially on Morgo 750s. Side. This was the divider that was in between the top and the bottom with the two different vintage light bulbs. So now I'm able to do this. I've got, got my brake light wire and here I've got my running light wire. So now I can put connectors on both of those and then ground the new 1157 bulb in here and use this mount even to mount the 1157 bulb or mount it off these two stainless fasteners at the bottom here with a plate bent out so that the 1157 bulb is mounted in the center and we will have this tucked away but I think we're going to tin snip this so that we can use the actual glass holder at the bottom because this is what happens on the bottom there was no rubber here so I used some gasket sheet rubber and self adhesive industrial stuff and the friggin glass is glass so <laughs> I put rubber in there and there and then this will go into that point there with the seal here around the bottom and the back rubber seal on the sides too and then we're going to use these clips these end clips to hold the glass in place on both sides so we'll cut it off here basically right there and then here and we'll put that one back here so that's holding the glass in place and that's that's a done deal the tail light solved and uh, back to the front wheel I'm gonna get this together I gotta get working and thanks to Linmad for taking the effort to put up some service videos because good refresher for me who hasn't had a 650 in about 10 12 years and also excellent for new riders even if they're not gonna fix their bikes they'll know what to look for in a mechanic a real mechanic not a white lab coat mechanic so there you go that's a front brake for you I'd definitely step on this brake you can see that there's no movement in the brass spacer I've created as well and the brake rod is working excellently I can dive these brakes all the way down now find out if there's an oil leak in them right on